Hello and welcome people to yet another tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about 480i. A lot of aspects will be similar, but there are some very relevant differences. Uh, we're going to start like the last time with uh, Elgato. Um, you want, uh, if you're going to be, uh, if you know that you're going to be recording something that is interlaced, you can definitely turn this off because it's not going to come in handy at all. Uh, make sure to uh, make sure to uh, make a library folder in some place that you can find or just locate it. And uh, here, um, if you're gonna be recording something in 4ADI, you will have to record it over component, composite, or as video. Uh, you really kind of want to avoid uh, recording off of composite once you're uh, getting to. Uh, sixth generation, uh, because uh, it's uh, it's not very good for the level of detail that those games present. Uh, when you're recording from S video, you can only get 480i image, and if you are recording off of component, you can get both 480i and 480p. You want to allow for 60 frames. You don't want to convert to standard definition. And stretch standard definition is not necessary. Um, you, it will be useful if, in case your game is in fact in widescreen. So those are all of the settings that are relevant. And now, just as before, uh, we're gonna take a look at what Sony Vegas is going to allow us to do with the TS file. Obviously, uh, just as before you don't have any audio if you straight up upload the TS file, uh, but that can be dealt with if you really so desire. First of all, uh, without any uh, inter uh, deinterlacing, uh, the resolution looks really nice when there is no, uh, where there is no movement. See? Here. The image looks really nice. There is a lot of uh, there is a lot of detail. Uh, everything is very sharp. But the moment we have the tiniest bit of movement, uh, this happens. Uh, everything just goes out of uh, out of order. Now I should mention, if you have a game that is in thirty frames, this may not necessarily happen. However, you should always check the entire video because. Um, the interlaced uh, format is anything but consistent. So it may, uh, those lines may not appear in one moment, but at few scenes later or a few screen transitions later, uh, you may just end up getting something similar to this. Now, Sony Vegas as before offers several different options for getting rid of it, and um, they mostly work similar. I say mostly. There are certain differences. Let's see blend fields. Now blend fields, just as before, uh, blurs the hell out of the image, but keeps the entire resolution as it's supposed to be. And looks fairly okay in uh, uh, static images. However, in movement, it just not very pleasing to look at, really. Then we have interpolate fields. Now, interpolate fields gives a much sharper image. However, uh, it loses out a lot on, in the definition front. Pay attention, especially on these um, letters here. They don't look quite right, especially uh, compared to when we. Uh, for example, don't have any sort of uh, deinterlacing or use blending fields. See? However, it does have the advantage of completely getting rid of um, interlacing artifacts. See? Uh, but lowers the resolution of the image significantly. Uh, in Sony Vegas, you can also in Sony Vegas 14. You also get 60 frames when you do that, but sadly, it is not very suitable for uh, actually rendering the videos because you get that wobble. 
Now there is a third option which uh, previously with uh, 240p was just about as good as using interpolate fields except it was locked to 30 frames. By the way you can also use interpolate fields, lower the frame rate to 30 and that way you get rid of the wobble. Did I do it right? Yeah, interpolate fields, disable resample. But um, yeah, the resolution is still going to be very low, exactly half of what's supposed to be. Now, uh, going back to uh, Smart Adaptive. Smart Adaptive is actually pretty horrible uh, when it comes to uh, w amongst the uh, standard Vega settings. Um, because it may it may appear just fine right here, see right here full resolution, uh, but it for some reason it just randomly drops the resolution to half, just as if it was interpolating fields. Maybe it's specifically uh, to do it has specifically to do with sixty frames games, but either way it's just not very good. Not only is it locked to does it lock it to thirty? Wait. 60. Not only does it lock it to 30, oh, huh, weird. It locked it to 30 before, And now it's showing, <laughs> and now it's showing full 60. Well, in any case, it's not. Uh, even though it does work in 60, apparently now for some reason, uh, it's not an ideal solution because, like you see, it just very inconsistent with how everything looks. And even on things that aren't, uh, even on things that aren't really moving all that much, like for example text, it ends up looking very um, unappealing. Like for no reason, this entire text box just moves. Uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, adaptive uh, deinterlacing, Sony Vegas actually offers well. There is a third-party solution uh, for this, and that is called the Adaptive Deinterlaced uh, Deinterlace. Uh, in order to use it, you need to uh, set the uh, video file to progressive scan. It's gonna do that for all of the files which come from uh, the exact same uh, uh, from the exact same video file. It's gonna look horrible for now, but just bear with it. Choose media effects, and uh, among the OFX, if you have installed it correctly, you'll find the out of the interlace and add it. And you don't need to do anything with this. You just you just leave it be. It is still locked uh, it is locked at 30 however um, it is actually really good looking uh, 30 frames it's uh, very uh, it's got very consistent uh, high resolution look to everything it doesn't wobble like the uh, like the adaptive and you don't get that motion blur that um, the uh, blending uh, blending fields causes. See? So this may actually be better for some people who, for example, don't care for 60 frames footage. But um, uh, what I prefer to do personally is to use uh, Handbrake. It's gonna look a little bit different from my last video uh, because they recently updated it. Most of the functions are similar, however, we need to uh, it looks very very different. First of all, uh, in order to add a new uh, preset, you just save new preset, 
you make your own resolution. You want it to be as high as possible, as in as high as you care to make it, and then you click Add. I'm not going to be adding this because I already have a preset. Custom preset, test. Let's just call it test. And now, here, before you do anything, you have to decide whether you like the uh, custom cropping. Uh, it's not always ideal. Sometimes it cuts out way too much. Um, I personally am going to disable all of the cropping. And it's, be, and it's important that you do this right now, because otherwise um, the resolution may sometimes mess up from, wha uh, from what you int uh, intended to do. You set up the height. Height is the most important one. And the other one is going to uh, change accordingly. And here we have more or less what it's going to look. Now with filters, we want to choose Yadif, Bob, and keep it at default. We don't need to be, get too fancy with that. And here, the frame rate you can set to either 59.94 or 60. And keep it at constant frame rate. That is exactly what we want. Um, everything else, for the most part, you can leave it as B. Um, since, we're re uh, since we're rendering it to uh, 1080p, I would say 25,000 uh, kilobytes per second is perfectly fine. These are optional if you want to have uh, more optimized uh, compression. And then you choose Save As, you choose the file location, you choose the file name, whether, it's be, uh, whether it be MP4 or, M or M4V, it doesn't matter, they both contain the exact same information and just start in code. I have already, uh, I have already encoded the file, uh, so we're just gonna open it and uh, compare it together with um, what it looks like with the Yadif, the interlace. I have cut it at the exact same points, uh, points and it should give similar results. But um, f uh, let's get to somewhere where there is a lot of movement. For example, here. There we go. And now I can show you that the video does in fact run at steady pace of 60 frames a second. And it looks, uh, looks pretty good at that. And even the text, which uh, with uh, Smart Adaptive from uh, Vegas, which now turns out to be 60, unlike what it was before, it's... I don't know why it had happened. Even the text is way more consistent. And uh, the uh, pictures of the characters do not randomly drop in resolution between frames. You sometimes notice a little bit of a shimmer around certain objects, but that's just something you have to deal with um, when you're rendering it to uh, 60 frames from 480i. But yeah, um, that is it. Uh, that is it. You can also uh, you can also take that sort of uh, you can also take that video, lower the frame rate to thirty, like so, and it will actually get rid of most of the most of the shimmering issues, if you so uh, if you so choose to. Uh, the quality will be very uh, very comparable to uh, Yad of the interlace. You'll likely not be able to notice any sort of issues. And after you're done with uh, with what you uh, need to do, uh, just cut the video up, uh, uh, cut the video up, mark uh, the region that you want to render, choose your uh, choose your custom preset, adjust it as you wish, and just render, and that is it.